Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on missing values in Stata. So the easiest way to talk about missing values is I think to generate some and then to show you what they look like and then to move on to a consideration of how with a data set that has missing values you can do some additional things that help you with your analysis. So the code I've entered here, I'm just going to talk you through it. I started out by setting up a data set that has a hundred empty observations and I've gone ahead and generated a new variable just calling it var1 that takes on the value of 1 in the first 50 observations using this code and so this is what the code looks like and this little dot here represents a missing value in stata. Now it's important to realize that uh, a missing value won't look like this if you look at 64 where it's completely empty. This is me, I've deleted the little dot that indicates missing but as soon as I take the cursor off that it'll come back. You see? So there's a distinction between uh, you know a missing value that's indicated here by this dot in Stata and let's say in Excel where a missing value is just empty like this. You see? So that's an important thing. When you see this dot in Stata it's the same thing as just the empty cell in Excel. Another point of interest in some Excel data sets there are ways of identifying missing values that do not transfer over into Stata like double dot here which I think shows up in a fair number of World Bank data sets if I remember correctly. So if you are just say copying and pasting uh, data over from Excel to Stata just make certain that your missing values are actually like this. The cells themselves should be empty because Stata will not read symbols in in Excel and you know translate them into missing variables in Stata so that's just a best practice there. So after having generated these missing values I just want to show you what happens when we we tab it out. I've gone ahead and entered in the command tab for var1 and we see here that only the populated values are represented, right? We have a total of 100 observations, but only 50 of them have any data. And so when we do the tab command, it's automatically delimited to the observations for which there are data. In other words, the non-missing observations. So once again, we could also look at the data through a list command with a comma table appended here, just so you can see once more what it would look like. So instead of the table itself is going to again take on this dot uh, as the missing value. So let's uh, let's go ahead and clear that out and do some new work with missing. So I'm going to enter the clear command on the next line. I'm going to set up a new data set with 150 observations as you can see here. And I want to do an experiment where let's say we set up some data about age and BMI and I want to have some missing values in here not just for the purpose of showing you because you already know what missing values look like but for the purposes of illustrating what you can actually do analytically with some missing values okay so I'm gonna enter a bunch of code at once don't be scared because I'm gonna talk you through it one one line at a time might seem like a lot of code to you. Um, so the first thing I'm doing here is I'm generating a new variable called age x and the r uniform command is just a it's a randomizing command so I'm picking ages at random from 6 to 70 and just populating the data set with those. Then I'm using the round function here to just go ahead and round that um, because realistically that's what you would get in data sets of this kind. Then I'm going to drop the variable that I used initially so that only my rounded variable for age remains. Next I create a BMI variable and that is random from a 15 to 45. It's not Gaussian, it's just uh, you know uh, randomized in this domain. And here the code that I'm highlighting now, I'm creating some missing values that I want to play around with. Let's say that for whatever reason in these in this range of observations from 45 to 75 we do not have a BMI value for those participants. And let's say in the range from 37 to 57 we have no age data. So there are some observations for which there is no BMI 
some other observations for which there is no age, and then finally a set of observations in which there is neither age nor BMI. So what I've done is I've used the generate function here to create three new byte variables and that's what byte is here. It's just me telling Stata that these variables that I'm generating are going to be byte. And I've just gone ahead and called them incomplete, no age, and no BMI, as you can see here. And here we're using the missing function. So, you know, we've gone from seeing what missing data look like to actually using a missing operator for a really specific and I think a quite common purpose. Here, for example, if you look at this line of code, I'm creating a new variable incomplete that is here to flag observations for which neither age nor BMI are present. In other words, observations that are missing both age and BMI. In this line of code, I'm creating another variable, no age, to flag observations that are missing age. And finally, I am creating an observation, no BMI, I beg your pardon, a variable, no BMI, to flag observations that are missing BMI. Then here, uh, after I do all that, I've just set up a list command with the table so that you can see what the data actually look like. And then I've done some summary, summarizing commands here that I'm gonna talk you through here in a minute. So first let's run all our data and run our commands, I mean, and go back and look and see what we've done. Okay, so notice that we started out with just two variables, age and BMI, and here are the three byte variables we created, incomplete, no age, and no BMI. And notice that they take on values of zero here, but around here some stuff starts to happen. So here's an observation 37, for example, in which there's no value for age. There is a value for BMI. And so uh, we flag it as incomplete, first of all, because we do not have both age and BMI. And then we also go ahead and flag that uh, as no age because of course we don't have age information either. And then finally it's a zero for uh, no BMI because obviously we have BMI information. So if you look, look through this table, you'll see that there's a subset of data here for which we have just values of uh, one for incomplete and for no age and for no BMI. And then there's others where just incomplete and no age or no BMI are flagged. Why is that important? Well, let's say that you wanna do some statistical work here and let's say that for whatever reason the age of the participants is important to you even if you don't have BMI data for them. So notice that you know we could use this conditional operator right if no BMI equals zero uh, to summarize to summarize age. So this would be age for all the uh, non-missing values of non-BMI, just for example, you know, and, and you could go ahead and, you know, you could, you could do a bunch of stuff here. You could turn that into one. You could summarize age for the, uh, you know, entire set of incomplete uh, observations that we flagged. So basically using that missing function, you can begin to incorporate that into conditional logic. And, and, and that, that, that will happen. There, there'll be data sets for which, um, some subsets of you know observations values are missing but you still need to be able to carry out some statistical analysis it it kind of helps to flag those missing variables in the way that i've shown you um, there are some procedures for which stata is just going to not take account of those missing variables on its own um, as as a built-in feature but this approach that I've shown you here of just, you know, flagging certain missing values and variables is just a way to cover yourself just in case there's a command out there. Maybe it's a user written command. Maybe it's, you know, some static command that doesn't automatically deal with missing variables the way that it should. Uh, this is the way to sort of cover yourself so that missing values can be properly included and excluded. So you don't necessarily have to rely on the underlying logic of the commands that you're using. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. 
Therefore, we work very closely with you in order to perfect your chapter three and chapter four. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day, you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter four uh, following a perfect chapter three and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.